Today's video is going to cover the chart kick gem, which is going to allow you to make little charts like this one right here that allow you to track the uh, analytics on your website, maybe through an admin dashboard. So in this case, I have a list of posts and I have the view counter for each uh, day being summed up to see how many views I have total. And you can see here that towards the end, we spike at 760. And then on the, the 20th, which is the day I'm recording this, I don't have any analytics yet. So the number is currently zero. So we're going to be doing this using the chart kick gem, which you can find info about at chartkick.com. And we're also going to be using the group by or group date gem, which allows you to do a bit of uh, group by calls. So just a little bit to cover it. It's actually not as much as it sounds, uh, but we do need to start by adding the chart kick gem. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I'm going to hit F 11. And then I'm going to press control and plus to bump up the font size. And then we'll just say bundle add chart kick that will add it to our gem file, assuming we're inside of the right rails application. And then once we have that, we can then optionally add the uh, group date gem, which will allow you to do some calls like this one, where you can say user dot group by day, uh, create it at, and then you can grab the count or do other selections. And this just allows you to group based on a time period, which is really helpful, especially for time periods like months or years uh, or even weeks where it's a little bit harder to work out the logic because you can imagine if you're grouping by months, you might have a 30 day month, a 31 day month, 28, 29, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is just a nice little feature to have. So we're going to add this one as well. We're just going to come into our uh, console again and type bundle add and then grab the group date gem, which is one word. And we'll just go ahead and we'll run that. Once that's done, we're just going to set up a very basic scaffold that we can play with. So for this, we're going to say rails G scaffold. I'm going to create a list of posts, give each one a title that doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're going to give them views of type integer as well, just so that we have some numbers to show on the screen. Once that's done, we're not going to run our migration yet because we're actually going to bump up the font size in VS code, press F 11 to full screen. We're going to go into the DB and the seeds folder to create some seeded data because this is sort of independent of what we're doing. Uh, so what we're going to do, I think we can do like, um, let's see how many times I did this previously. I did it 100 times. So we'll do one dot dot 100 dot each, uh, do, I can do an end here. And then I did a post that create, I gave each post a title of title. I just like it's suggesting here, we don't have a body, so we can skip that part. Uh, and then for the created at, I tried to make it do a different day for each post. So here I'll just do time dot now minus I dot days. So as I increments, it'll go back further in time. So it is important to note that this is going to be a little bit in reverse from what you're expecting. Uh, and then for the views, all I did was I grabbed a random number between 15 and 100, and then I divided it by, uh, well, actually, you know what, let's just leave it as 15 to 100 for right now. We'll come back to this to sort of see why I did that. So this gives us our test data here. Now, if we come over to the chart kick, it's going to have us do some optional pins to the import map. It does also have instructions for Webpack or sprockets if you prefer to use those. So this is supported up, I think back to rails five, it seems like we're going to be following the rails seven instructions. Now, if you do switch to Webpack or something, you just follow that uh, instruction set, but for a Rails seven application. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy these two and then inside of config import map, which we can either go into the config folder or we can type control P and just search for import map and then go down to config. Both of those will work. Basically, we just want to paste this in right here, hit control S to save it. And then that is now imported through the pins. We can then come over to the app JavaScript application.js file. So app JavaScript application.js. And we're just going to paste this in. We're not going to think about it too hard because that sounds like a bunch of work and I'm not interested in doing work right now. 
Once that's done, we can then hit Control W to close the seed file and we can come up to wherever we want to put these. So for now, what we'll do is we'll just come into config routes.rb and we'll change this to be the root uh, post controller index action. And then we'll come into the views and the posts and the index page and we'll put our chart right here. But let's just go ahead and run a rails db colon migrate command. And then we're also going to want to run a db colon seed command to seed the database. And then we can run a Rails S to start the server just to see what we have right now. So if I refresh this, you'll see we just have a list of posts with a bunch of random view counts. So if we come over to the index page here, we can just insert something between all of the posts and the title. We'll just say, let's create a line underscore chart for the post and we can do a dot group by day. And then we can do a, um, let's say colon created at, I don't know if this will work, but we'll just do a dot count and we'll see what happens. So what this does is it, oops, it groups each post by the day that it was created at. And then it just tells you how many posts were created on that day. Now you can see here, the number is one across the board. So this really isn't an interesting chart. Now what we can do is instead of having this dot count at the end here, we can do a dot sum for the colon views. And just by changing that one line, we can now see how many views we got on each day. Now, of course we only have one post per day. So this is a little bit weird. Uh, but you can sort of see how this will help you visualize what your trends are over time. If you have all of this data as people visit these posts, uh, you can sort of see, okay, well, this post in particular is doing well, or, you know, in the case of my YouTube channel, today's Father's Day, the YouTube channel doesn't do too hot on Father's Day because people are busy spending time with their family. So you can sort of pick up which days are your strong days and which days are your weak days. Um, but what we can do is we can leave this view counter here and we can add in a optional range if we want to. So we can say range is one dot month dot ago. And then this uh, doesn't work sort of how you expect it to because, well, maybe it does, but this range right here, if we come in and we refresh, this will now grab you the uh, March 12th to June 16th still. And the reason is this is a range and not a, um, it's not like implied to go until the current time. So what we have to do is we have to do from one dot month dot ago, uh, to time dot now. So if we change that, we now get something that looks like this from May 20th to June 20th, which makes sense. But what's a little bit strange, it, it makes sense that we have zero views today because today hasn't finished yet, but it doesn't make sense that May 20th has zero views. The reason why May 20th has zero views is because right now, uh, whatever time the Rails app thinks it is, isn't midnight. So it's going from, let's say, 4 a.m. on May 20th to 4 a.m. on June 20th. This post right here might have been created at you know, 1 a.m. though. So if this was created before the time that we're starting at, it's gonna be a little bit off. So you can either aggregate all of your data at a specific time each day, uh, or you can just default it to midnight. Now, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, let's grab it from midnight and then go until the time dot now. And that will pick up your May 20th uh, item because it was created I, uh, presumably around midnight. Now the June 20th, we still don't have data for that. So that's not really great, but let's see what happens if we sort of mess with the data and see if we can get some kind of trend here. That's a bit more interesting to look at than just random data. Uh, and then that should hopefully give you something to play with going forward. So if we come into the DB and the seeds file and right here where we have the views, we're doing this RAND, let's just take it divided by i times 0 0.1. We'll then stop the server. We can clear this, do a rails db colon reset, which will drop the database, migrate the database, seed the database, and then we can just do a rails s to start the server again. And once all of that's done, we now have data that looks a bit more organic.
uh, because we're sort of cheesing how we're doing this. Um, but essentially we have the, uh, we have the number being multiplied by this uh, weird little function here that will make it seem like it's growing over time uh, with the random data. So this is probably a good data set for you to work with. Of course, June 20th is still bugged, but if you come back over to chart kick, you can see that there's all sorts of data here where you can uh, create pie charts, bar charts, area charts, etc. cetera. Uh, so anything you really need, it just ends up being a call to whatever the chart type is. And again, this is all powered by chart.js, I believe. Yeah, chart.js, which I mean, this is fairly well known. Uh, if you've ever had to do anything chart related with the JavaScript app before, you've probably used something similar. Uh, but you have all of these examples here with the rail snippets. These are all really helpful. Uh, but if you come down here to the options, you can see all of the different options that are available to you, including like how often you should try to refresh the data. So this one right here runs off of a URL. So you might have like a JSON endpoint that you're pinging every 60 seconds. But this is all pretty helpful stuff for whatever type of chart you might need. Uh, and they're all gonna work fairly similar to the one we just created on the index page. So I would suggest taking a look through this and figuring out what you need. And if there's a specific type of chart that you need covered, just let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of them right now because to me, they seem fairly similar, uh, but I know that sometimes some edge cases can be tricky. So if you do need some of these covered, just let me know. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.